good. One thing that I told um, everybody last class is that, yep, yeah, you can say hi. Um, that everything we're doing in this class, guys, is not more difficult, is not any more advanced than Algebra 1. It's really not. Not the trig. The trig is trig. But the algebra is not more advanced than Algebra 1. So let's go ahead and rewrite this a couple different ways, first of all. I think you guys would, because this kind of, I think, sometimes gets a lot of students confused as far as the notation goes. OK, that's the same thing. Yes? Yes. So one thing we can do is, why don't we say x equals cosine of theta minus 2? Because to me, cosine of theta minus 2 looks confusing. So I'm just going to use a simpler variable as x. OK? So by doing that, I get 4x squared equals 3. And I say, oh, yeah, I definitely did that in algebra 1. I can solve that fairly easily, right? When I get rid of the trig and I just focus on the algebra, I can be like, I can solve this. Divide by 4. x squared equals 3 over 4. Not going to make the mistake like I did last class period. Right? Got to do plus or minus, so don't forget that. All right. So, um, so therefore, we can now, can we now go back to our original equation and kind of say x equals, or what does x equal? x equals cosine of theta divided by 2. So now we can just say cosine of theta divided by 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. Yeah? yeah. Yes, question. This is x. This is x. 4 is not, 4 was always there. It's 4x squared equals 3. x is cosine of theta minus, divided by 2. The 4 was always there. I'm just saying let x equal cosine of theta divided by 2. So I just replaced cosine with x, okay. right? OK. Now. The theta minus 2 might be, again, you guys don't need to do that. If you guys wanted to do inverse operations like this, if you wanted to divide by 4 and then take the square root, you'd still get the same amount. Like, that's fine. You don't need to use this. I only do this to show you guys. If you get stuck on your test or quiz, go back to x's. Go back to y's. Go back to the number 1 and 2. Make things simple, right? Um, because what happens is, you know, when you guys get confused, Kind of like with Zoe, I'm not picking on her, but it's like it's a very common thing. You guys start to make up things, right? And I'm not saying you made it up, but you're like, oh, it seems logical, right? So you don't do things that like follow normal advice. And obviously, like if you just would have tried, you know, the nine minus four, and you said, mm, oh, that doesn't work, right? So when you guys get confused, use easy numbers, use basic what you're used to, because it is confusing, and you are going to get things mixed up. So that's why a lot of times it's nice to revert to the to the basic stuff. All right, anyways, this theta divided by 2. We can't undo this, guys, because this is under the radical. And again, I'll do one more example for you. This is kind of making it a little bit longer than I need to. But if I was going to say solve for x, what was the first thing I need to do? Can you, why, why don't I multiply? What should I do? Should I multiply by 2 on both sides, or should I undo this, or should I square both sides? Square. You have to square first, correct? You can't multiply by 2, it's under the radical. The same thing is here. Students multiply by 2. I'm like, how can you multiply by 2? It's inside of cosine, right? You can't do that. It's inside of the function. So you got to get rid of the function first. So a lot of time to avoid doing this, I just say, let alpha equal theta over 2. Let's just, make it, let's just substitute it again. You don't need to again. If you don't want to do this, then don't do it. But I think it's a little bit easier for me to visualize the angle that makes plus or minus square root of 3 over 2 correct. Now, going to my unit circle, I know that cosine is square root of 3 over 2. In the first quadrant, it's plus or minus, right? So this point, which we know is which angle? Pi over 6. And cosine is also going to be positive here. And then we need the negative one, which is here and here. So these are all have the same reference angles. So do you guys know what those angles are? Oh, actually, sorry. So, um, so we, I got to be careful. Um, 
So to do, we're actually going to find all the solutions here first. Okay. Instead of doing the zero to two pi, I'm going to find all the solutions because again, we're not trying to solve for alpha, are we? We're actually trying to solve for theta, right? So we don't want to be confused here. Do you guys see how these are equidistant from each other? So if I wanted to find all the solutions, here's what I'd write. Alpha equals pi over 6. I don't need to write 2 pi. I can just write pi in. And then, because out pi over 6 plus pi gives me uh, 7 pi over 6. And then I can do alpha equals 2 pi over 6. I'm sorry, not 2 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6 plus pi in. Yes? You could, but it's going to be a lot more work for you. You'd have to write 2 pi for all of those angles. It's a lot more work. This is just a simplified version. Okay. Now, again, guys, we're not solving for alpha. We're solving for theta. So now you can replace. And please let me finish this, if you guys can, before the bell. It won't take me long after the bell goes. But this is really important. So now, how do you get rid of dividing by 2? Multiply by 2. So now theta equals pi over 3 plus, I would simplify that, 2 pi n. And theta equals, um, let's see, that would be 10 pi over 6, 5 pi over 3, plus 2 pi n. So that is all of your solutions. And then, what if I wanted to find all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi? You just, basically pick problem, you just basically pick values for n. But guys, if n is any other number, if n is 1 or, or 2 or negative 1 or negative 2, is it going to still give us an angle between 0 and 2 pi? No. So our only solutions here are pi thirds and 5 pi over 3. I could spend five minutes taking questions after lunch. Besides that, go ahead and have a good lunch. And I'll see you guys after.